All right, ladies and gentlemen, so today we're going to be talking about Antra Dhashas in Vedic Astrology. As I discussed before what Dhashas are, which you can check right here, okay? Antra Dhashas are part of the Dhasha system. Dhasha is pretty much a planetary time period that we all go through, that we are going through right now, okay? Like the mom from the moment that we are born, we're going through a certain time period of a planet. So maybe if you're born at a certain placement of the moon in your birth chart in a certain nakshatra, you are probably going through a 10-year cycle of moon. And then after that, you're going to go 7-year cycle of uh, Mars. Then after that, you're going to go 18-year um, uh, cycle of Rahu. Then 16-year cycle of Jupiter. the 19-year cycle of uh, Saturn. So you see how in your life, these planets, a single planet is really controlling majority of your life okay but then the problem comes in that if you're just going through let's say jupiter dasha and jupiter is sitting in your seventh house that means that the 16 year are you just going to be dealing with your marriage partner and agreements and that's it is that all you're going to be doing you're not going to be dealing with debts you're not going to be dealing with mortgage your education your home and family no you're going to deal with everything however majority of that 16 year period is controlled by jupiter okay so the situation of the seventh house are become the major part of your uh dasha and the houses that jupiter are ruling so if jupiter is in the seventh house and it's ruling the 11th and the second house for aquarius ascendant so jupiter is going to give you the results of the seventh house including the fact the houses that he's controlling 11th and uh, second house but then these mini periods come in the 16 year the mini periods could be anywhere from six months to a year and a half and so these mini periods are known as antra dasha so dasha is major part and then little bitty other planetary time periods come comes in so while jupiter is giving you situations of the seventh house okay then other planets will come as well. Jup uh, uh, Jupiter will go through Saturn's uh, sub-period, its own sub-period of Jupiter. It'll go through Rahu, Ketu, Venus, Mercury, Saturn, Sun, Moon, Mars. All of these sub-periods will come in that 16 year. And so you'll be experiencing all of these other things. However, you will be experience experiencing these small little avenues through the seventh house experiences. Meaning that through your wife, you may experience debt, which is the sixth house Lord Antradhasha might that may come. You might go to foreign land with your partner or your wife or your husband if the twelfth or ninth house Lord Antradhasha came in. You, if the fifth house Antradhasha came in, then you may actually meet your wife through education, entertainment pursuits. You may go through a lot of uh, creativity and educational pursuits through the resources of the seventh house so in a major period all these sub periods that come in validate the seventh house period so not only are they bringing the situations that they're controlling the sub periods which is known as antra dasha they're validating the period of the seventh house so because majority of the period is jupiter and in that, sub-periods are coming in that are giving you conditions of other houses through the seventh house. So through the seventh house situations, you're literally experiencing every other situations in your life. So you see how one planet is not really controlling your entire 16-year period or 10-year period. Every planet will have sub-planetary periods that come in and bring you those situations. So there are a lot of techniques to see Adhasha. But let me make your world a bit more complicated and a bit more tougher here, okay? And this is why it takes a long time to really grasp, to get a hold on a horoscope through Dasha. Is that not only you're going to look at the NBC chart or your birth chart, you're also going to look at the D9 chart. You're going to look at a D3 chart. You're going to look at the D10 chart, okay? And you're going to look at the Mahadasha Lord position in the main birth chart, in the NBC chart, in uh, uh, Saptamesh chart, in the Samsha chart, Nevamsha chart, okay? And you're going to see where is this, how is the condition of this planet, 
in those houses and signs. Okay, because in that 16 year period, any person can experience a gazillion things in their life. They can have ups and downs and then rise again in the same thing. So let's say if a person starts their Saturn Tasha and they rise up for the first four years in their Tasha. They get all the promotion. They get all the success in their field. They get married and then suddenly within five years, they come down to where they're filing for bankruptcy. They do not know where to go. They don't know where to live now. They're living with their, they move, the family moves in with the parents and now they're going, their mind is going haywire. What happened? I thought my life is uh, good. And then within two years, something happens where this person rises up again and he goes not only to the position where he started from, he goes even higher than that. This is seen from divisional charts. That not only your Saturn in the main birth chart, which was excelled, helping you and giving you the good time in that Tasha, but in the D9 chart, if it's debilitated, it's also bringing you problems, okay? And in the NBC chart, where it's now uh, not excelled and it's in Virgo in the sixth house, it's giving you debts. So it's giving you a lot of problems and obstacles. But when you look at your D10 chart, it has a niche Bhangra Yoga in your D10 chart. Then what it shows is that, okay, this person rose in life, went down in life, but due to their niche Bhanga in the D10 chart, they rose up again. And once an astrologer looks at these things, then, but since we're talking about Antradasha, the small subplanetary time period, you want to make sure that none of these Antradasha planetary uh, planets are sitting in uh, the Shtana houses, meaning that 6th, 8th, and 12th house. Make sure they're in the Kendra and Trikon houses, and especially if they're in the 3rd and the 11th house, that shows a lot of uh, courage and gain in those Antradashas. And not only this, you have to look at in the divisional charts as well. Are they well placed in the divisional charts or not? Are they in Kendra and Trikon in the divisional charts, like the D3, D9, and D10 chart? Or are they not? Because if they're not, and while your uh, you know, Saturn is excelled in your D1 chart, then you know that you're also going to be experiencing these other things or these other uh, you know, hardships that are shown in the divisional charts. It's not just about the sublord period being in the 6th house, 8th house, or 12th house. You also want to check if they are 6th, 8th, or 12th place from the Dasha Lord itself. So if you're going through that Jupiter Dasha in the seventh house and Mercury is in the second house, what does that tell you? That tells you that Mercury is eighth from Jupiter. That means it may give sudden events. And since it's in the second house of wealth and family, sudden fluctuations in family, meaning that sudden fights in family and then you suddenly get better, sudden fluctuation in your savings, you lose money and, or you can suddenly gain money. Okay, you can suddenly lose money and gain money. And this is how you have to look at it. And this is why, ladies and gentlemen, there are such a small percentage of people in this world who are able to succeed all throughout their life because of the fact all these things just come together perfectly. Whether it's not just their chart be having good planets in there, but also the Dasha Lord and their placement and the Antra Dasha Lord and their placement are good, not just in the birth chart, but in the divisional chart as well. And, you know, this is why, you know, once you look at all the minute things, then you can see, you know, how the percentage just shrinks from you being at the bottom to the, you being at the top of the packing order. But again, you can beat all of these things. You can beat all of these things if you just, you know, concentrate yourself onto that ultimate source power, that source energy. Once you do that and you forget all these things, these things, the planet and the combination of planets are all controlled by the source energy itself. You know, so anytime you have a problem, a smart person will say, don't go to the manager of that store. Don't go to the manager of the company. Go to the actual owner at the corporate office. And that's when you will get your things done. It's the same way. So just because you have a bad dasha and a bad planetary time period, don't go and try to do remedies of planets through rings and pujas and mantras. No, go directly to the source energy and connect with it. And that's when all these planets, you know, mellow down. And the effects that you will get will be through the blessings of the source energy and not the planets.
and I will keep saying it in the future and I've said it in the past as well. So once you look at all these three charts, including your NBC chart, then you see, okay, am I really going to have all the good results majority of the time in these sub periods or am I going to go, uh, am I going to experience mixed results? That means ups and downs, ups and downs, ups and downs. And then how do you judge when you're going to have the ups and downs is you look at a certain sub period uh, planet in the sub period and to see if, okay, if I have excelled Saturn, excelled Saturn, Dasha, and Saturn is well placed in all the divisional charts, but then you go through a Mercury, Dasha, where Mercury is not well placed in your birth chart, but then is averagely placed in your uh, divisional chart, then it's, you know there's going to be some trouble regarding the houses that Mercury is placed in and what it's doing. And this is how you have to connect your brain, your entire brain needs to suddenly make a connection with all these different scenarios and give you a uh, result or an astrologer gives you a result that, okay, this is what's going to be happening in your uh, chart. And with practice, this will come within a minute of looking at the Dasha, the sub, the, lord, the sub lord and where they're placed in these charts. You'll be able to, because nobody has a perfect Dasha, nobody, even Bill Gates go through his ups and downs. You know, even Bill Gates was sued and went through courts and went through all these things. All the billionaires, millionaires face hardship in their life. Okay. But are they going to rise up again or are they not going to rise up or are they going to go through these things? You know, with bravery is all seen through the divisional charts. Now, another important thing that you want to look at is if your Dasha Lord, the Dasha planet of the, the Dasha that you're running, is he a functional malefic or a functional benefic for your chart? Or if you're running through a, a, a planet that is a functional benefic for your chart, is he in conjunction with a functional malefic? And how close is the conjunction? And I'm going to explain the functional malefic and benefic part also later down the line in the coming weeks. But I discuss this in my book as well, functional benefic and malefic. And I give you examples and how functional malefic and benefic work. And so you have to know these things as well. And now you see like how long it takes to actually learn astrology to see how and especially regarding your career, regarding your status. And if you're going to get a promotion in life, if you're going to get uh, a good job in life or a successful business, look at the D10 chart position of your Dasha Lord, where it's placed, which I'll discuss tomorrow when I discuss the actual how to judge a Dasha. Right now, just the Antra Dashas. You know, you have to make sure how to look at that. And I just wanted to make sure you guys know what Antradashas are, which are simply the small planetary time period in your major planetary time period. And if you don't know what these are, check out my Dasha video and check out my book. OK, now, if you're new to my channel, subscribe above because I'm going to be discussing more of this useful stuff. And if you really want to know about all these Dasha and Antra Dasha, like I said, check out my link below. Check out my book there, Astrology at the Speed of Light. And when you get the book, I will send you the link to look at your own chart. Otherwise, I'm going to see you tomorrow with the main Dasha period and how to actually look at the Dasha and some of the insights information into that. All right. Bye bye. Hey, what's up, all you cares lovers? So make sure you rate, comment and subscribe to my channel. And please share my channel with all your family and friends who are in love with astrology. Because I'm the man when it comes to astrology, okay? So make sure you do that. And I will see you tomorrow with another cool new video, okay? Sorry, I love my coffee spike. Woo!